Hello and welcome along to round 5 of ETGT League Season 4. We are at the Mount Panorama Circuit at Bathurst in Australia. We've been coming here for every season now. I'm a bit of a tradition and um, even though you can't see it, the Mount Panorama um, logo is there on the mountain as we have a look at the season schedule. So yes, it's round 5. We're getting away from Europe. We're doing the flyaway races here. So we're in Australia we're going to head on to Japan and then to the Americas later on to round out and end off the season. So let's have a look at the points standings as we hit into round five and Nick Faf is in the lead, 38 points. Chris Badajak, 31 points, equal with Peter Dongo who's in third after Brands Hatch and Peter Cameron there in fourth place. He's ahead of Trent Fuller who is in fifth position and Solomon Thackeray in sixth place. 22 and 21 points respectively. And the three drivers who debuted at Brands Hatch, Colin Racing Team, Mitchell Collin and Blake Williamson. Seventh and eighth, Mitchell Collin with his victory gets 10 points. And Harsha Hossa debuting last race as well. He has two points. Let's have a quick look at the teams and construct the standings in Team 53. In first with 53 points. How convenient there. They're ahead of Faf Motorsports and Seco Motorsport, the one-car teams. And you've got Colin Racing Team there on 13 points in front of Fast EV Racing, who have two points on the board. And Mercedes, 122 points well ahead of Porsche, with 36 points on the board. And BMW, 26 points in third. Now we have a new team making their debut this round in ETGT League. It's the PC Racing Team, consisting of Jeremy Crow and Mark Pacheco. We'll have a look at their livery now. As we look at the number 104 of Jeremy Crow, there's a nice fluoro mobile one livery there. The yellow should help them stand out on the mountain here in the uh, midnight conditions that the drivers will be racing in. And there's a picture of the 773 car of Mark Pacheco. So these photos were taken on a filming lap uh, that the two drivers went on just before to uh, promote the new livery and their debut. Harsha Hossor and Fast EV Racing have also updated their livery. There's a photo of it there now. Got a nice stripe there on the bonnet. You see some sponsors on the side. You've got Boss, Chopard, Brembo. And Harsha made his debut last round at Brands Hatch. Let's see what he can do today, or tonight we should say, at Bathurst. Now Chris Paterjack and Sicko Motorsport have also updated their livery with Hungry Jacks returning as a major sponsor for this round. Uh, Hungry Jacks were the major sponsor for Seco Motorsports in Season 1, so they've returned here. They've made a special livery thanks to P Design. Have another look at another angle there, so yeah, Hungry Jacks. Hungry Jacks colours on a Seco Motorsport car, it's looking good there. So it's a special race here at Mount Panorama, we've been coming here every season. It's a tradition for ETGT League to hold a race at Bathurst in the Mount Panorama circuit. So we've got a new team debuting, a couple of uh, couple of updated liveries and we have a shot of the dipper there and the um and Brock skyline so you can see the sun set it's night time here and the conditions are going to be challenging for the drivers but we'll head down to the grid soon for the grid walk we'll see where PC racing team qualify for their debut race and um who gets on the front row it's a unique front row here where the cars are side by side instead of usually on a race grid they're staggered but here everyone's side by side and close up it's going to be uh, hectic into turn one and the long straight into turn two as well. We have a beautiful shot there of the um, of Bathurst. Let's head down to the grid for the grid walk. We're down here on the grid at the Mount Panorama circuit. It's midnight here, but the fans are still packed out the venue. The drivers have lined up. Qualifying is complete. Let's see where they line up 
on the grid here side by side on the front row we've got Nick Faf in pole position your championship leader car number seven Faf Motorsports see what he can do there on the grid it's the perfect place to be on the inside going into turn one and he starts right alongside Peter Dongo team 53 car number three starting second on the grid that's a great spot to be in as well since you're side by side with the uh with the pole position Let's see what he can do on the front row of the grid and those two will be starting ahead of mitchell colin who lines up third position car number 30 colin racing team get a great great result last time out at brands hatch Let's see what he can do here at bathurst he lines up alongside his old teammate chris patterjack car number 90 sicko motorsports Got a different livery here for um for the Bathurst round, the Hungry Jacks. As designed by P Design. So they've chucked the Sicko Motorsports have chucked up the car. Looks great. Hungry Jacks being represented here on the grid. So Chris Patterjack in fourth place. Let's see what he can do on the grid from the second row. So those guys will start ahead of Jeremy Crow in his unpainted Porsche. Wasn't able to get the Porsche painted for the race, unfortunately, but he starts in fifth. It's a good position there right alongside Feza. So he'll be on the inside of Feza, who starts in sixth place. Car number 21 in the Marlboro livery. Looking good there, under the lights. So the uh, two Porsches starting side by side on the third row of the grid. And Jeremy Crow's teammate, Mark Pacheco, will start in seventh place. Now that's a good look at livery. The fluoro design, shining in the night. That'll be an easy car to see up the mountain. There's not many lights here around the circuit, but Mark Pacheco will make his presence known. So, start the seventh on the inside. See what he can do here at Bathurst. And you start alongside Trent Fuller. He will start in eighth position, car number five, team 53. The white car, making it easier to see in the night as well, actually. So that's good for Trent. He starts in eighth, and he starts ahead of Asha Hossor. He will start in ninth position, got a different livery on the Porsche here than he had it last time at that uh, at our uh, brand hatch it's looking good there with the stripe Harsha Hosso starting in ninth place he'll start alongside Blake Williamson who starts in 10th position guy number 747 Richard Collins teammate and driving for Colin racing team obviously so he'll start 10th and last on the grid and that's how they all line up here at Bathurst for this night race we'll take you back up to the commentary box now we can catch the rest of the action, round five, ETGT League, season four. We're about to go racing here at the Mount Panorama circuit. The lights count down, the engines are roaring, the drivers are off. Nick Faf gets a good start. Well, Mitchell Collins was a little bit slow off the line there. Oh, Peter Dongo is going to go side by side with Nick Faf as they're heading to the first turn. There's Nick Faf in the lead ahead of Peter Dongo. And Chris Panajak just behind him as well. So the top three bunched up there. Well, there's a bit of a group behind him as well. So with Jeremy Crow ahead of Richard Collin. He's got a bad start there. So we're getting a slipstream. So you've got Fezar and Trent Fuller side by side there as well. Let's tag head down into the second turn. Oh, and the Fezar was cutting a bit of grass there as the pack head up the mountain. It's Nick Faf in the lead. Fezo in seventh position ahead of Paco and oh and oh Paco and Harsha have uh, hit the so Harsha horse has hit <laughs> oh he's uh he's back on the track and away he goes but um Mark Pacheco it looks like he got hit there it seem to be white there I hope he hasn't got any damage continue on racing as the cars head down through the mountain oh look at that um so Jeremy Crow is now up to third position He's gotten ahead of Chris Paterjack. He was in third. So Nick Faf in first position. Oh, look at that. It's got a bit wide there. It's Peter Dongo now up into the first. Faf got a little bit wide there down the mountain. Lost control of the car. So he's in that second position. Oh, and the same thing's happened to Jeremy. Oh, okay. Chris Paterjack has got third back again. As they head down Condor Strait. It's Peter Dongo in first position. Nick Faf in second. Chris Paterjack in third hard to see deliveries in the middle of the night and the headlights are blaring the vision so there's your top three so Jeremy Jeremy back to fourth Richard Collins just behind him in fifth Trent Fuller in sixth position always 
Is that uh, Mark Pacheco going for the move? No, not quite. Oh, and Trent Ford going a little bit wide there, cutting some grass. As we head up into finish the first lap, Peter Dongo in the lead here at Mount Panorama. 30, uh, 30 minute race. First lap completed. There's your top three as they head to the first turn again. So Nick Faffy's. Oh, Nick Faffy's gone wide. Oh, he's lost control of the car. Oh, so he's lost a bunch of positions there. So Chris Panjack's now up to second. Nick Faff in fourth place, fifth place. So Richard Collins now overtaken him. And Jeremy Crow's back up to third place. Oh, well. <laughs> so your championship leader struggling here. Down into fifth place. See if he can get um get back up to Peter Dongo and Chris Paterjack and Jeremy Crow. So the cars, surely they're going to settle in a bit. We'll see what tyres everyone's on in a bit. Don't think anyone suffered any damage earlier on. Oh, and Nick Faff looked like he was going to scrape the wall there, though. Let's watch Mitchell Collin. Now, after fourth place, after not having the best start. So he's uh, chasing down Jeremy Crow in the other Porsche. So, Nick Faff in fifth. Trent Fuller in sixth place. And Mark Pacheco just behind him. Is Trent Fuller doing well here. He's up to six. Oh, he's actually bumped Nick Faff there. Oh, he's shoved his way past. Look at that. <laughs> Trent Fuller shoving his way through up to fifth place. Let's see if Nick Faff can... Um... Oh, is Nick Faff going to get the move done down the inside? Yeah, it looks like he will. Oh, almost squeezes Trent into the wall. And he gets the position back. Trent Fuller. It's right on board with him. He gets slipstream there. Oh, is that that's Mark Pacheco getting the getting the move done? Oh, there we go. So um, there was a penalty there for Nick Faff. And now Trent Fuller's got the slipstream behind Pacheco. Is he going to get an overtake done here into the chicane? Or is he just going to hold back? No, he's going to hold position. So Trent's going to stay in sixth place here. As we head up to start lap three, Peter Dongo's been the fastest lap of the race so far. The Trent Fuller can see um, the pack in front of him. He's not out of this at all. He's got still some good points here for Team 53 if he keeps this up. So let's move up to Peter Dongo, up in the first place. So he's got quite a margin now in front of Chris Panajak. He's got Jeremy Crowe just behind him. It's a good start here. He started in fourth place. Sicko Motorsport driver. Up to second. Getting in perfect sector in, getting the rhythm in. Everyone's starting to settle down now. There we go, Jeremy Crow in third place. He's got three dots on the side of the Porsche to say that yes, I am in third position. Camera showing it briefly. So let's have a look at the um, stats for the cars. And what tyres everyone's on. So soft tyres here for Jeremy Crow. And soft tyres for Peter Dongo as well. And Chris Badajak. So your top three, all on softs, no damage. So they'll be doing a soft to medium run, it looks like, as we head up through the mountain. Richard Collins is also on the softs. So he's starting to chase up to the top three here after recovering from his poor start. Oh yeah, that's a nice uh, nice line through the dipper there. And Trent Fuller now up to fifth place. He's past, uh, past his past. Oh, he's hit the wall. <laughs> I was going to say, he's hit the wall now and he's got damage. He passed um, Mark Pacheco at some point. And now Mark Pacheco has passed him back. It's Trent Fuller now with damage on the front. We saw him hit the wall there. Mike Pacheco's on the softs as well. So Trent Fuller on the softs. Fez on the mediums. He's going to play the alternate strategy here. I'm sure he's going to get past Trent here. He's got damage, unfortunately. He was running so well as well for those couple of laps. And now Fez are. Solomon overtaking into the chicane. Oh, is that Nick, uh, Nick Faf overtaking guard? Trent there. Let's see if they get out of the chicane. Yeah, he was, he was side by side and he's got the move done. Oh, but he's cutting the grass now. Is that going to allow Trent Fuller back past? Yes, it has. Oh, but, Trent, uh, but Nick Faf gets the move back. <laughs> Went up to Booster Blake there for a sec. Let's see what he's up to. He's back here. Nice position. He's got damage. Uh, he's in the pits now. So Booster Blake in the pits. He's going to repair that damage, it looks like. And um, yeah, there we go. Colin Racing Team waiting for him on this side of the garage as they come out and they'll service the car look at that they're harsher he's got the he's got damage everywhere the rear and the front 
You probably got the front damage from the start of the race. We'll see if he pits. Well, Boosted Blake hasn't even got... There we go. Now, now Boosted Blake is in the pits. So it's the car and away he goes. Harsha going to pit. Yes, Harsha Hosso in the pits. They'll fix that car. Put the tyres on and what have you with that. There we go. Fast EV racing coming out to service. Harsha Hosso. Boosted Blake. So he's out. He's put the mediums on. They fixed the car. And off he goes. We'll see if he can go to the end of the race on that. Oh, he might be able to. As Harsh is, there we go. So Harsh is in the pits. So you can see the damage on the front of the car. Oh, and the dog on the back of the car. <laughs> that was cute. So. Yeah, they're fixing the, they fix the suspension. They fix the bumpers. Away he goes. So he'll be on the medium tyre, surely. As we see the helmet cam. Now he's put the sauce back on. No, the mediums. There we go. The graphics changes on the mediums. So Hasha Hosso is on the mediums. Let's head back to the leaders here. So we've updated on everyone's uh, tyres situation. Fezza is on the mediums. Those who are pitted are on the mediums. And Peter Dongo is in the lead. As we go on to start lap five. So these guys are in the mediums. And they'll go on for another oh, few laps. Probably halfway through the stint. Ooh, and Peter, did he go wide there? I think it's allowed Chris Banerjack to catch up a bit. So start that five. He's going to have a big slipstream here. He's going to get a move down into turn one. Oh, he's thinking about it. Look. Oh, no. He's just putting himself in Peter Dongo's mirrors. Are they going to get a... Here we go. So Chris Banerjack's going to get a slipstream here. Okay, Trent Full is now pitted. He'll be, he'll be in the pits to fix the damage. We're watching his teammate trying to defend from Sicko Motorsports. Oh, they're going to the second third. Is Chris Banerjack in the lead? He's on the outside, but Peter Dongo is on the inside. Oh, that's... See, that's tight. Oh, now Jeremy Crow's up to second. So Peter Dongo's in actually the third place. He's lost out of all that. Oh, he scratched the wall a little bit. So Birdman now in second. Oh, he tries to... Oh, he tries to squeeze himself there. Oh, he's hit the wall. So that's allowed Peter Dongo through. Okay, so out of all that... So out of all that, Chris Panajak is in first place. Oh, very tight. Peter Dongo's just behind him. He's almost nudged him off the circuit. Oh, these guys are quick. Up at the top of the mountain. All the adrenaline going through these guys. Got to keep it clean through here, down the mountain. It's the Hungry Jack's livery shining through in first place. It's Chris Panajak in the lead, ahead of Peter Dongo, who was ahead of Jeremy Crow. So these three. Oh, and Jeremy. Looked like he was going a bit wide there. Mitchell Collins not that far behind. The Collins Racing Team got a good view there of the action. You can see the top three just ahead of him. All of them are medium tyres. Feza. Now getting down to Conrad Strait in fifth place. He's on a different strategy though. So he's not quite out of it yet either. Go back up to the front and see what's happening here. Oh, it's very close between all these guys. So Sicko Motorsport in the lead. Not an unfamiliar position to Chris Panajak here at Bathurst. Oh, Jeremy Crow lining up a path. I think he's just making himself known. He's got two Mercedes, two, two Porsches on the top four. And Peter Cameron and BMW not making it to Bathurst here, unfortunately, this round. So we've got the Porsche and Mercedes here at the mountain. Chris Panajak in the lead front of Peter Dongo and Jeremy Crow. He's got Mr. Collin, fourth position. Fezzer in fifth. Nick Faff in sixth place, slowly recovering after um, after that slight spin. Oh, Mark Pacheco's in the pits now. So, uh, PC Racing Team servicing their driver, Trent Fuller, eighth position. Now up to seventh now, with Pacheco pitting. Boosted Blake at ninth, and Harsha Hossel having lonely races there in ninth and tenth. As Pacheco pitched, look at that, look at that livery. Oh, so, so he's swapping the tyres on, swapping the tyres, he's got the softs on, he's going to put the mediums on, fluoro um, yellow, getting repaired, it sounded like. It sounded like there's some, some repairs going on there. And away he goes, it's Mike Pacheco out of the pits. So Birdman's now up to second place. He's overtaken Peter Dongo somewhere. 
Oh, Mitchell Collins now caught up to all these guys too. Look at that. All right, so, Birdman, Jeremy Crow in his unpainted Porsche now ends up at the second place. Peter Dongo in third. Mitchell Collins in fourth. Basically, battle of the top four now. Although Chris Paterjack's a little bit of a gap, but all it takes is a bit of a penalty or a bit of an off, and any of these guys can switch positions. So they're well ahead of Feza and Nick Faf, about five to ten seconds down the road. Forgot to start lap seven. Things are settling in a bit. Maybe Faf can um, catch a pass Feza in the closing laps. Oh, what's happened here? yellow flag for uh well, it doesn't look like anything's really happened Chris Paterjack's still in the lead he's got quite a gap now in front of Birdman Peter Bongo now oh, looks like something happened to Mitchell Colin I said, something happened to Mitchell Colin there so he's lost out now he's well behind we'll have, to, we'll have to go back and see what happened to that so Fez is now just um just behind Mitchell Colin Fancy's a pass, I think. Look at this, Peter Dongo also just behind Birdman. <laughs> Alright, so if he can keep, he can keep the pressure run up the mountain, maybe Birdman will make a mistake. Well, you've got to be careful for the arrow as well, so maybe Peter Dongo will make a mistake. Oh, see, he's, he's just scraped the wall. He'll get away with that though. His cars are alright like that. They're going to go down the dipper. Birdman in the Porsche. The mid-engine car versus the front-engine car, the, the, the balance is different between them. Oh, and yeah, it's very tight, isn't it, between these two. So Birdman, oh, he's, oh, and he's, he's, he's ruined it. <laughs> he's absolutely binned it down at the corner. Oh, he's hit the wall again on the rear. He's probably got no damage. Oh, he's hit the front, though. Is Mitchell Collin going to get past now? Oh, Mitchell Collin just sees him and goes, what the hell is that, mate? Oh, and he... He's, just, he's going to get a slip stream. I'm not sure if he's going to get past him though. Oh, we'll stay on board with this. It's a bit of cold now. He's past the bit of cold. He's past him for third. Oh, there we go. Just gets the move done. Now, does Feza fancy a chance? Oh, it's not quite over yet though. It's a bit of cold. Just ahead of Jeremy Crow. There we go. So Fez is going to line up and move this side by side. So in the pits goes. I think that's Mitchell Collin. He's in the pits. Yes, he is. Oh, and Birdman's now side by side with Fezza. He's now up to third place. Fezza Racing Team up to third with the alternate strategy. Keeping it clean and it's working out here for this guy. All right, so Mitchell Collin now in the pits. Collin Racing Team awaiting their driver. I don't think he's got any damage, the car looks clean. Probably just uh, lost it on the circuit. <laughs> Filled up the car and away he goes. So he had the soft tyres on, he's on the mediums. Easy done there for um, Colin Racing Team. So, let's see if he warms his tyres up. And we'll see what he can do from there. As so we watch the leader here, Chris Paterjack. He started in fourth place and he's, um, he's kept it clean. Did the overtakes and the good start and now he's up to first getting into a rhythm here. It's got Peter Dongo just behind him as they head down the dipper. So Mitchell Collin and um, Mitchell Collin pitting. Well, he was actually a little bit behind anyway because of his little incident. So realistically, the battle is on for the race win between these two now, Chris Paterjack and Peter Dongo, both on the same strategy. Nick Faf had his spin or little incident earlier on in the race on lap two, so he's a bit behind. Um, Jeremy Crowe's had his incident just before we saw that, so he's a bit he's a bit behind. Uh, Mitchell Collins spun or something happened there as well. So the others are really playing catch up. Oh, I think Chris hit the uh, hit the curve there a bit. So we're going to start lap nine. He's going to pit. Okay, so now he's in the pits. All right, so he's in the pits. Are your leaders are pitting? Chris Paterjack and Peter Dongo, both in the pits now. 
Team 53 now out to service Peter Dongo and Sicko Motorsport waiting for their driver Chris Paddajack who is the race leader Dunlop tyres will go on that car Michelin's going on Team 53 and Jeremy Crow is now pitting as well so there we go Peter Dongo's in the pits there we go Chris Paddajack in the pits Hungry Jack's racing getting serviced out he goes Peter Dongo's still in out he goes Jeremy Crow he'll get serviced there we go <laughs> he's in the pits now as well change of tyres and out he goes so Chris Paddajack ahead Peter Dongo these guys are effectively your leaders although in the lead of the race is Feza he's just ahead of Dick Faf so Jeremy Crow putting on the medium tyres that should take him to the end of the race Ooh, it's tight between these guys so Feza on the mediums we'll just double check and see what uh, tyres Nick Faf is on Nick Faf also on the mediums but he is carrying damage so it's a struggle for him in this skin but he's keeping up the pace these two, four, oh, they're really tight. <laughs> they go through the mountain. Nick Faf just behind. As he chases down. Solomon. Oh, did we hear a bit of wall scrapage there? Keeps the car in control. See how close he can get through here. Oh, yeah, looks like he caught up a bit. No, but Fez has got a good exit, so. Mercedes not getting too much of a sleep stream down Commodore Street, but we'll stay on board with them for a bit. They go on to start lap 10. But these guys can go on for a little bit longer. But they will have to pit soon. Especially for fuel anyway. He's, he's not losing out too much is um, Nick Faf with the aerodynamics damage. But still. We'll see if any of them pit. Okay, Fezza is in the pits. And Faf's in the pits. Okay, so your leaders are pitting again. Fezza Racing Team. And, um, well, there we go. Coming out. They'll be servicing their drivers soon. And so will Faf Motorsports. So here is your leaders again. Chris Paddajack and Peter Donga. They cross the line. They'll start lap 10. Sicko Motorsport in the lead. Peter Donga in second place. Team 53. As he chases down Chris Paddajack. Let's come to turn one and Nick. And, oh, and Peter Dongo has done it. Oh, he's done what Nick Faf did earlier in the race. Oh, he's beached it. Look at that. He's gone. Is Nick Faf still in the pits. If he's in the pits, he's out. Are they going to get ahead of Peter Dongo? What's happened here? So we can see Peter Dongo there. Look, he's still um, out. Oh, and Mitchell Collins coming past as well. Okay, so Fe uh, Fez is one out of all that. He's in second place. And Mitchell Collins just behind him. He's got the tires up after temperature. He's going to now try, try and chase the second racing. Uh, the Fezzer Racing Team, uh, Nick Faf there in 4th place, Peter Dongo in 5th. Oh, and Birdman's chasing him as well. Trip Fuller's back in the pits. Okay, so, Solomon won out of all that. Wow, that was very close there. The Mitch Collins just behind him though. Hey, got Chris Paddajack, and he's about 15 seconds or so in front of all these guys. And well, so we, we didn't even take notice of the time this race has been so so full on. There's 20 minutes down, there's 10 minutes to go here, so we've got about 5 or so laps left. And at the moment, Fez is in second place, oh, and he cut some grass there. I think he touched the barrier, that's going to allow Mitchell Collins to get really close. Oh, surely Mitchell Collins is going to pass. No, you had nowhere to go. Absolutely nowhere to go there for Mitchell Collins. Alright, so they make their way down the dip pass, and Nick Faf's really caught up there. Look at that. He's itching to get past. He wants to get on the podium after his spin earlier on the race. And Peter Dongo, he has lost out to Birdman, we can see, unfortunately. Oh, that's... That is unlucky for him. Uh, just, he was chasing down Chris Paddajack for the, uh, for the lead. But... Now he's uh, like 20 seconds or something something down after beaching it. Oh, is Nick Faf going to get past? Look at this, down Conrad straight. Oh, no, he gets in just behind. Is he going to get to the inside? No, he stays in, stays just behind Mitchell Collins. Oh, but Mitchell Collins on the grass. Oh, Mitchell Collins hits the grass. Did they touch? Oh, Nick Faf's now off to third. Oh, jeez. Okay, so Mitchell Collins now down at the fourth place. Jeremy Crowe's catching up to him, though. He's in the fifth. Peter Dongo. Oh, he's just behind at six. 
Still, he was in second place, was the Team 53 driver. You can see all the cars just ahead of him there. Oh, is that Birdman going to get a move done on Mitchell Collin? Well, he is. He got it down the inside. Jeremy Crow on the charge. What's going to happen with Mitchell Collin now? He's going to get the slip stream, but is he going to get a pass done? On the other Porsche, he flashes his lights, I'll tell him he's there. No, not quite, he's going to just stay behind. Just ahead up the mountain. It's Peter Dongo, he's sort of catching up a bit. Probably fancies he's a, you know, a place or two if some of these battles resume. So Mark Pacheco is just all by himself here, unfortunately. You know, he's like 10 or 20 seconds behind those in front, but he is 10 or 20 seconds ahead of the next car, which is Trent Fuller. Who just pitted though, he put um, new tyres on the car. I'm assuming he put softs on, used the mediums, and now he's put his, uh, now he's put the softs on as he is crossing the line to start lap 11. We'll just check what Trent Fuller's put on. Yeah, he's put the mediums back on, okay. And Hasha Hosso, up in ninth place. So he's um, not sure if he was last in his past boost to Blake. He's been focusing up on the action at the front, front of the grid. The boosted Blake finishing in 10th at the moment. He will score a point. He chases down Harsha Hosso, fast EV racing. Let's take a quick update of all the cars while we're here, I guess. Oh, look at that, he's got damage. The boosted Blake's got damage. Must have hit the wall somewhere. Bit of a, a bit of a shocking race for him and Colin Racing Team. Oh, and faster uh, Harsha Hosso. He's also got damage though on the front. So maybe neither of them are pitting. Well, maybe Harshaw is not pitting because he'll lose his position to Blake if he does. We wanted to fix that damage though. But Trent Fuller, he had enough of a gap to pit. He's got no damage. He's got medium tires on. So he's in eighth position at the moment. Behind Mark Pacheco, who as we said, yeah, he's pretty much just by himself there with the medium tires. With the neon, the neon paint sort of shining through where it can. But it's still very dark here. It's very hard to see these liveries, the armor all sign. There we go. So Peter Dongo, oh, he's got a bit of damage here at the front. Oh, did he hit a car or did he hit the wall when he spun out of the pits? So that's going to be hard for him to catch up to Mitchell Colin and um, potentially pass him. Mitch Colin on the mediums, Birdman on the mediums, Nick Faff. Oh, and Fezza, what's happened there? Oh, something happened to Fezza. Oh, he's hit the wall. He spun. Ah, oh, that's. Ah, oh, he was in second place. That allowed Nick Faf to get past. It's Nick Faf now up to second position. And chasing down Chris Paderjack. So Nick Faf's on the soft tyres. Chris Paderjack on the mediums. All right, so race is on, I guess. Although there is a quite a gap, isn't there? Chris Paderjack in first place. Nick Faf, he's just coming down the dipper. So it's about 10 seconds. So it's five minutes to go. Nick Faf, chasing down. We'll see if Fezza's got any damage, actually. No, no damage on Fezza. He's on the soft tires. So he'll just get away with that. He's in third position. All right. So, less than five minutes to go in this race. Sicko Motorsport in the lead. Chris Paderjack in the lead. So he's going to start lap 13. It's about two minutes a lap. So we're going to get two more laps in. So we're starting lap 13. All right, so we're going to get two more laps in. Oh, I don't know. It's actually... Oh, the timing's... Yeah, this is tight. All right. So Nick Faf has at least two laps to catch up. He's on the faster tyres. He's got no damage. There, you can sort of just see him ahead. You know, you can see him down the straight. Nick Faf's a good recovery. Oh, he's pretty good at Purple Sector. Look, he's got the fastest lap as well. That last lap was the fastest lap for him on this race. Meanwhile, Chris Padjack's fastest lap was earlier on in the race. And he held that for, I think he held that for quite a while. Now Fezza in third, he's got the gap ahead of Jeremy Crow. If he can just keep it on the track and not spin there like he did <laughs> in the race. I think he'll be alright. Could finish on the podium here. 
could uh, Solomon Factory. It's Jeremy Crow chasing him down. There's only a couple of laps for all these drivers to get anything done. The clock is ticking, three minutes to go. Lap, lap and a half. Richard Collins is fifth, yeah, he's a bit ways down after, um, oh, we forgot what, I forgot what happened to Mitchell Collins, actually. After he, uh, was chasing Fezzer down early on, that's right, he was cutting grass. He's cutting grass while battling Nick Faf. And then Peter Doggo in six, well, yeah, he could have been up there on the podium. He beached it after the first turn. So what's the situation now? We're about to start lap 14 and we have just over two minutes to go. Oh, and someone's in the pits. Someone's in the pits. Well, I think that'd be Boosted Blake. No, it's Harsha Hossler. <laughs> so he's coming out. He'll be just ahead of Chris Paderjack because he's going to get lapped. But he's Chris Paderjack in the lead. So he's still a few seconds ahead of Harsha Hossel, I mean of um, Nick Faf. Less than two minutes to go, we'll see if this will be the final lap. I actually don't know what's going to happen here. Um, look, he's, he's like Chris Paterjack has enough of a gap, surely he's got this. So Nick Faf's not really, uh, he's, he's just over five seconds ahead, I think, uh, behind I think. Fezzer in third. Yeah, you see, he's got the gap as well. They've all got sort of similar gaps between them. And, um, Harsha Hossel in between them all. <laughs> and Jeremy Crow there in fourth, so... Yeah, we'll see what happens here. So Chris Paterjack in the lead. He just had a clean race. He, uh, yeah, didn't get involved in any of the accidents. Started fourth, but he had a good start. Managed to get past Mitchell Collin. Is that Nick Faf behind him just there? No, not even. So there's quite a bit of a gap there. As we head down the dipper for the final time, the Hungry Jack's racing car, <laughs> Hungry Jack's livery making its return to the grid, the Sicko Motorsport. I mean, look, let's see, let's see. Look, what, what, he might slow down, actually. And this will be the, uh, this will be it. As he heads down Conrad Strait, previous winner here at Bathurst, Will he get his second victory in ETGT? The clock's ticking. Look, there's, well, there's 20 seconds to go. I'm not sure. What's going to happen here? Look, it, it's tight. Where's Nick Faf? Oh, he's, no, he's like five seconds behind or so. It's 10 seconds to go in the race. Chris Panajek's in the lead. Is he going to... What's going to happen here? Is he going to slow down? Surely he's going to slow down. Oh, he is! He's slowing down! Chris Hadjack's slowing down before the line! And there you go, he wins! It's 30 minutes, he's won the race, and check it flags out! Chris Hadjack is the winner at Bathurst! Ahead of Nick Faf! Oh, he was only a few seconds behind at the end there! Ah, oh, Seiko Motorsports on the top step ahead of Faf Motorsports, ahead of Spezza Racing Team. So, so Solomon does finish in third, Jeremy Crow in fourth position, Mitchell Collins crosses the line in fifth. Peter Dongo, he'll cross the line in 6th place. After running as high as first, he'll pick up some points there for Team 53. And Mark Pacheco, all on his lonesome there. That beautiful fluoro car coming in to finish 7th place. And Trent Fuller, so he's on the Conrod straight. So he'll score points for Team 53 as well. He had a good run in the first couple of laps. And Harsha Hossel's already passed the line. He's, he was already, um, yeah, lapped. So he crosses the line in 10th position. He'll score a point. Good for him there. And um, Trent Fuller's just passing the chicane now. There's still blue flags waving for um, Harsha, but uh, he's finished the race, so nothing you can do there. Um, yeah, all the cars are now on their cooldown lap. You can see Trent Fuller's going to cross the line. So he'll cross the line in 8th. After a couple of pit stops, he'll finish ahead of Boosted Blake, who will finish... He's just coming down Comrod straight now. So we'll just have a quick look at there, Chris Paterjack, the winner again. Hung with Jack's racing car down Comrod straight. Oh, and up the mountain, sorry. And there we go, Nick Faf, they're side by side. What a race. Ah. <laughs> 
and there's Faf. These two. Yeah, if it was one more lap, maybe Nick Faf would have got him. And Feza, third place. I wonder what would have happened if he didn't hit the wall there. Oh, and um. And there we go. Chris Patterjack and Sicko Motorsport are victorious at Bathurst. Finishing just ahead of Nick Faf. We were chasing him down right at the end there, but Chris Patterjack slowing down at the, uh, on the main straight to uh, get the race timer at 30 minutes and take the victory ahead of Faf Motorsports. And Fezzo Racing Team in third place with Solomon Fackery finishing in third. It's a great result there. And they're ahead of uh, Jeremy Crow on his ETGT League debut, he finishes fourth. Ahead of Mitchell Collin in fifth position. He was running with the leaders for a bit of the race. Then he uh, spun out a bit. Everyone got into a bit of trouble um, at some point in the race, especially Peter Dongo, who was up there fighting with, with Chris Paderjack for the lead. And then he spins out in uh, turn one. He finishes ahead of Mark Pacheco. He finishes seventh on his ETGT League debut ahead of Trent Fuller and uh, well, Blake Williamson there in ninth place. Ahead of Harsha Hosso, who finishes in tenth. And Nick Faf, he gets the fast slap with a 203. 0.233. So let's take a quick look at some highlights now from the race. As we go on to start lap two, Nick Faf, he's running in second place. We'll see what happens here. So he, so he goes into the first turn and he just cooks it on the exit. I think he puts a bit too much throttle. Here we go. Oh, there we go. Just a slight spin. Oh, he manages to keep it off the grass, but yeah, he loses a bunch of positions. And we'll spend the rest of the race trying to catch up. So it's lap five. And Mark Pacheco is flying up the top of the mountain, but he goes a little bit too fast down the dipper and just absolutely stacks it. Boy, oh, into the wall. It's big damage there on his Porsche. Oh, he hits the rear for good measure as well. Oh, so they have the cars behind him to get through. Oh, and the fluoro, fluoro um, little car. And off he goes. Oh! He slides again, actually. <laughs> no, probably um, overcooked the tyres. Not enough grip. Oh, we can see him trying to, try, trying to make. Oh, it's painful. It's painful to watch. There we go. <laughs> Mark Pacheco, back on the road. There's lap six. And we're right on board with Mitchell Colin. He just loses it here at the last corner. He puts too much throttle on on the exit. Spins the car. Oh. Very lucky to keep it out of the wall there. See his tyres smoking. Whoa. <laughs> Very close call there for Colin Racing Team. So on lap 9 here, and we're on board with Harsha Hossa. He's chasing down Blake Williamson for ninth place. Let's see what happens into the second turn. Blake Williamson's on the inside. He hits the kerb. He loses control of his car. Oh, he gets a slight tap from Harsha. They both hit the wall. As we check it out from a different angle, so we can see, yeah, Blake Williamson on the inside. Oh, he just hits the curb slightly. Yeah, there we go. Bottoms out. Oh, dang, there you go. Harsha goes on through. So would have copped a bit of damage there. So it's lap 12. Let's see what happened to Feza as he was climbing up the mountain. He was in second position, defending from Nick Faf. I think he just hits the wall or he just loses control of the car. Yeah, he just slowly, slightly loses control. It's very clumsy error there. Oh, and that allows uh, yeah, Nick Faf to go through and chase down Chris Paterjack. So it was an all-round chaotic race for most of the grid there, but Chris Paterjack ends up victorious. It's his first victory of the season. It's also his second win here at Bathurst. And Nick Faf and Peter Dongo, unfortunately, both um, sliding off at the same part of the track in the first corner, just putting on too much throttle in their Mercedes AMG. GT3 cars and um, yeah, Peter Dongo would hit the barrier unfortunately and um, beach it. I think Nick Faf also had a bit of damage as well though. And um, the midnight conditions proving challenging for the drivers here. Some of them hitting the wall and some of them spinning out. So let's have a look at the point standings after round five here at Bathurst and Nick Faf is still in the lead. 47 points. You got Coos Paterjack there in second place on 41 points. He's a little bit clear now of Peter Dongo after taking the 10 points. Peter Dongo only taking 5 points. He's got 36 points now. Still in 3rd place. Solomon Fackery shooting right up the grid there. He's on 29 points ahead of Peter Cameron who didn't race. And Trent Fuller is on 25 points. And now Mitchell Collin. 
up to 7th, but he's in 7th place with 16 points. And Jeremy Crow, 8th position with 7 points. A good debut there for him in ETGT League. He's ahead of Blake Williamson, who only scores 2 points here at Bathurst. He's in 9th place. He's ahead of Mark Pacheco, who's with 4 points on his debut. Harsha Hosso, taking 1 point here at Bathurst. He is in 11th position. Let's take a quick look at the teams and constructors standings in Team 53, still in first position with 61 points ahead of FAF Motorsports and Sicko Motorsports. You've got Fezza Racing Team 4th, TCR Racing in 5th, Colin Racing Team 21 points ahead of PC Racing Team who have 11 points after their debut here at Bathurst and Fast EV Racing, 3 points. Mercedes still well ahead of Porsche, 149 points versus 64, BMW still on 26 points after Peter Cameron didn't participate here at Bathurst. And that's it for round five here at Bathurst. I don't think the sun's rising anytime soon. It's absolutely pitch black. There's still some fans lingering around the circuit though. And um, yeah, the drivers are still celebrating. Chris Badjack's definitely celebrating, I'm sure. It's his first victory of the season. He's um, a few points behind Nick Faff, but there's still four races to go. Fair chunk of the season. We've got some new teams, new drivers, new competitors on the grid. So we'll wrap things up here at the Mount Panorama circuit. We'll be back for round six at the next venue, which will be in Japan. We'll be at Suzuka. It'll be the league's first visit there. It's going to be very exciting. And I will leave you with a photo montage of today's round here at Bathurst. For the photos you saw at Brands Hatch and here tonight, taken by this man here, Insane Grunt Automotive photography. So we'll see you in Suzuka, but until then, it's bye for now.